Hello students, how are you all? So today we are going to start the coordinate geometry. The basic idea is pretty much familiar to you all that we have y axis and x axis. Uh, let me discuss it a little bit. This is positive x axis, then the opposite one is negative x axis, we refer it as x dash. This is the origin point O, and the upper one is positive y axis, and lower one is negative y axis. These parts are called quadrants where this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third one and finally this quadrant is the fourth one. So we have all the quadrants over here. Now the main thing is that if I give you a certain point P in this quadrant, first quadrant, so what should be the coordinate of that point? First of all, to reach up to that point, you have to move along x-axis, uh, say it is small x value. After that, you have to move along y-axis, say small y value. So the coordinate become x, y. So where x is the abscissa and uh, y is the ordinate. This is how we know about all the Cartesian coordinate system. And all of this having some portion or gaps, equal gaps in centimeter graph, where if you do it in the graph paper, you will have the same portion with the graph over there. And according to the graphs, you have to find the points of the portion. Suppose this is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. Also, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. If I give you a 3, 4, so first one is to find the x that is in 3 over here, then 4 is over here. So the point should be like this. First of all, you have to come up to 3, then rise up to 4. So this is your point. Say so this is point R. And having the coordinate, 3 comma 4. So that is how you have to find or do the graphical plots over here. I provided this PDF over here where all the graphical plots in proper graph paper is provided in the PDF as you can see from the next part also. This is the graph papers and the total thing is provided to you how you have to find each of these points. But before that, uh, let me start the first chapter from here where number 5 in number 5 uh, the total diagram is given to you and some points are marked over there that A, G, C, B, D and E points are there all you have to find the proper coordinates of each of these points as you can see I already did it over here that A point Having first of all x value that is 2, then y value that is also 2. So it's become 2, 2. Similarly, about point B, as you can see, this lies over here. Also, there is no y value. So what we will write in the place of y? Properly 0. And in the place of x, as you can see, this is minus 1, minus 2, and this is minus 3. So, x value should be minus 3, y value should be 0. That is how we are finding all the values of coordinates in this case. I hope the idea is clear that how you have to find all these values in these coordinates. Coming to Number 16, that is most important one in this chapter, uh, that the adjoining figure is showing that the equilateral triangle, OAB, with each side 2A. That means this equilateral triangle having each side 2A. All you have to find the coordinate of the vertices. That means you have to find the coordinate of point A. How we can do that? Let me show you. First of all, we need to find the vertex point is how much far from the x-axis. For that, we need the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, let me draw it separately over here. You will understand it better by that. 
this is the y-axis this is the x-axis we have the first quadrant always you have to write it like that or draw it like that okay this is y now this is the equilateral triangle present over here let me change the color so this is our equilateral triangle where the measurement is given as this is also 2a this is also 2a and the base is also 2a so if i draw one perpendicular line that will intersect this base totally actually bisect the base then we have this right and that is nothing but the height of uh, the x axis to the vertex so if the base hole as 2a then after bisecting each of this part will be a so right now we have the base we have the hypotenuse all we have to find the height over so height squared plus base square right now it is a square then equal to hypotenuse square so 2a whole square so let me arrange a little bit h square is equal to 2a square sorry it will be 4a square as i'm removing the square outside it will be 4a square minus of a square so finally we are getting 3a square as value of h square so what should be the value of h under root of 3a so this value of h is under root of 3a that you got from here so now we have the position of along x and along y so the first coordinate of a if as x comma y we can write in the place of x that is a and in the place of y that is the height so three so we got the coordinate system as a comma root three a as the point of vertex okay another point is there that is in origin origin means we know that zero comma zero what will be the third point the third point is as you can see totally having the x value that is 2a and no y value so in the place of y we will put 0 so there are three points 1 2 and 3 these are the points that you have to find i hope the idea is clear also the sum is provided in the solution copy and you can check it out from here now coming to dependent and independent variables remember i am showing all these all i am arranged actually i arranged this pdf according to your reduced syllabus so all the things that is given in your reduced syllabus you can find exactly same in this pdf as well all right so first one is given over here that is the dependent and independent variable what is that for that you need to find the relation see our uh, first example is given over here that is the area of the circle a equal to pi r square where in this case r is independent you can change the value of r and as r will be independent a will be dependent on this r a is a term that is depends on the value of r so whenever r will be independently changed a will be changed with r as well so in this case r is independent where a is dependent remember that and that is the idea behind it not dependency and independent from the terms all right so previously we have learned about how to solve all the equation by using uh, substitution method cross multiplication method elimination method but there is also another method by using the graph paper by plotting all the points using this all given equations in the graph paper we can actually solve all this equation so let me show you one of this that draw the graphical line or equation this in your graph paper also use it to find the area of the triangle formed by the line and also coordinate axis take two centimeter of one unit of both axes as i 
I already told you that I can show you in here as a graph paper. Also in the online class it is not possible. So that is why I already actually plan it over here. So as you can see over here, uh, first of all what I did. I break that given equation in the following data. How? First of all, in here the, this is the given equation. So as I solved it by substitution method or you also can say that, that according to that substitution method as we did in that cases that what should be value of x and what should be the arrangement of value of y the same thing we did it over here so if you rearrange it a little bit we will get the one equation or formula for value of x that is the first right now we have to find the exact values where we can put the exact values for graphs so what should be the first value that is zero always start from zero uh, take the another variable zero the first variable automatically will give you some exact values so in this case if you give y as zero it will be minus 12 by 4 it will give you minus 3 so whenever you are getting these all data don't forget to make the table for that that's a second second i took 2 over here so if you want, uh, you can also take 6 over here, that is 3 into 6, sorry, uh, you can also take 4 over here, that is 3 into 4, it will be again 0, which I did in the last part. Also one neat part is there, I just took 2 over here, so it will be minus 6, minus 6 by 4, that will be minus 1.5. So this is how we are getting all these values and how we can find the exact table that we are going to put in our graphical representation. So right now after completing this table, we just need only 3 or 4 values but 3 values more than enough. So after completing this table, all you have to put the given uh, data, sorry, given coordinates over here. So as you can see, this is your first coordinate, minus 3, 0. This is placed over here. This portion. Then minus 1.5 into, oh sorry, minus 1.5 and 2. So this is somewhere here, and finally 0, 4, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0. That should be here. So as you got this three of these points, you just have to draw one straight line, and that's enough. We got the final representation of that equation in a graphical. Paper, I graph it. So similarly, also other questions are given. And one more thing asked over here that find the area of the triangle that producing by this line. So as you can see, this portion. Let, let me show you. This portion is the area part that we have to find. And we know that for the right angle triangle, half height into base is the formula. So uh, height is what? First of all, you have to find the height. So 0 to 4. In the place of height, we can put 4. Now, what is base? Base is 0 to minus 3. So, in the place of that, sorry, uh, in the place of that, we can apply actually 3. So, it will be 6. I hope the idea is clear to you. Uh, still, if you have any doubt, you can ask me regarding this graphical representation. All you have to do, first of all, you have to practice it by yourself, use the graph papers, draw it over there, and also practice to solve these equations first by taking the exact values. And remember that whenever you will take certain values, that value should be a little bit exact. If you got it in fraction, then uh, we can put it in the graph paper, but still we have to face more difficulty in that. So always main, try to maintain a proper form that is as I did over here, minus 3. Uh, still minus 1.5 is pretty much uh, hard to put because you need 0.5 separation for that. But I will recommend to get the exact value. Similarly, you can see in the next part. Uh, all the values are quite exact 1, 2, minus 2, 4. 
So that is the issue. If you uh, do it more exact, more better for you to put it in the graph. So next question. Use a table uh, to give alongside of a draw graph paper with the straight line. So this is the given thing where you have to take the value of B as 1 and value of A as 0 first. As I did over here, when I just completed the graph according to the following uh, coordinates and find the straight line. Very simple one, just follow this one, you will get the answer by yourself. But all you have to do, you have to do it once by yourself. Thus you will understand it better. Okay, moving to the next chapter, sorry, moving to the next exercise where number six. Just we learned that how we can uh, make the straight line. But right now, if I give you two equations, then from each of these equations, you can construct one of these straight lines in the graph paper, right? And for each of this equation, you will get one straight line. So, in some point, the straight line will cross each other. And that is the exact point we have to find, which should be the common of these two. So there are so many cases regarding this part. We will discuss it one by one. First of all, we are starting from this. As you can see, two equations are given. All you have to do, you have to first find the table. So I just did over here by solving the value of x in our proper equation. Then by putting all these values, I get the coordinates. So as you have in the coordinates, you have to put the coordinates for each of these straight lines and you will get two straight lines where, as you can see, they are cutting each other at a certain point and that is the main point you need to find. And you can see 2, 1 is the point where they are actually getting across. So this is your answer where value of x is 2 and value of y is 1. Very simple one, just follow the steps. First of all, solve the equations, then find the value of x and y by making a table. After that, put all those coordinates in the graph paper, draw the straight line. You will find a cross sectional point, and that point is your answer. I mean, the coordinate of that point with value of x and y is your answer. So still you have to perform the same thing, I just did few sums over here regarding that topic. Now come to distance formula. What is distance formula? Let me have a graphical line where two arbitrary points are given, so P and Q. This is point P and this is point Q. Okay, so as you can see, they are not even in x and not even in y, not even touched with x and y. So we are just at, just joining them together. P having the coordinate value of x1, y1, x having sorry, q having the coordinate value x2, y. Okay. If I ask you that what should be the distance from the x axis to the point P, you will notice that, okay, let me change the color. You will say that this line, which is nothing but y1, uh, is the distance from the x axis to the point P. So instead of this line, we can also mark it as y1. Similarly, what is the distance from the y axis to the point P? That is nothing but the x1. If you notice it graphically. Also, from here you can say that for the Q, what should be the distance from the x axis? That is y2. And from y axis, similarly, that is x2. Just do it by yourself, you will understand it better. So, that is the height, that is the from the x axis, and that is the base as you can see. So, right now, I'm going to add this line. Okay. So, if you notice one thing, P, Q, and also this one, say R. 
you got one right angle triangle over here, right? Because PR is actually let me mark it as P. Okay. So PR is actually perpendicular to QD. So you got one right angle triangle over here. Now my question is that what is the height and what is the base of right angle? If you try to find it, you will get that y2 minus y1 should be the height of this small portion. Similarly, h2 minus h1 will be the base of this small portion. So all we got the height and the base. So if I told you what should be the value of pq or the length of pq, that is nothing but hypotenuse right now, and we have to add uh, the square of height and hypotenuse, oh, sorry, square of height and base of height. So y2 minus y1 whole square plus h2 minus x1 whole square under root. And finally that will give you the value of pq. And that is nothing but the distance now. What if the value of p or the point p is situated in the origin. Then you can say that x1 and y1 should be in the origin, that means 0. Then that is y2 square or x2 square. So that is the idea behind the topic, and this is your distance formula that you need to find. And that is, you can see, nothing but the Pythagoras theorem, right? Okay. So let me discuss it more in here. Let me do two sums regarding this topic. Find the point on the x axis which is equidistant from the point 2, comma, minus 5 and minus 2, comma, 9. So two points are given and we have to find a point that are in equidistance from these two points. Alright. For that, you need to assume one point. Remember one idea or one uh, condition is given to you that whatever will be that point, that point is in x axis. So whenever such point having placed on x axis, that means there is, must be some x value, but y value is zero. So we already know the value of y that is zero. All we need to find the value of x. Okay. So distance formula, we are going to use that. Uh, let's say p and q are the points over there, and we have to find it according to that. So first of all, let me erase this one and use the distance formula right now. So the first distance that is say I'm marking as a. So a is the first distance under root of that is for the first coordinate 2 comma minus 5 with x comma 0. So according to the distance formula we have this arrangement. So I'm just arranging like this minus 0. And the second distance should be also similar to like that where the coordinates are given as minus 2 comma 5 and sorry minus 2 comma 9 and the point coordinate is also remain same. We are just putting it over here that is minus 2 comma sorry minus 2 comma minus x whole square and 9 minus 0 that is it. So by solving these two we will get the value. Okay. As it is given that they must be equidistant so a must be equal to b. So if you add them together, or sorry, if you equate them together, this kind of this kind of uh, calculation will occur. Where finally, by solving this, we will get the value of x. I told you we already had the value of y. All we need to find the value of x, and that is minus seven, my friend. And finally, you are getting minus seven comma. Zero. That is the point which is in equidistance from each of these given points. Similarly, uh, also 
in the second one that we have to show these three points are collinear. So collinear means what I told you, they are remaining in the same straight line. So that is only possible if a certain uh, points must be equal to each other as it is given by you. So I just put that over here, uh, check it by yourself. If you have any doubt, you can ask me any doubt in the comment section also. The most common question asked over here that is make a square or show that it's a square by uh, having these four coordinates. So what is the question or what is the logic behind it? Suppose I gave you four values or sorry four coordinates. Most frequent questions come from this distance formula that construct a triangle or rectangle or say square or prove that this uh, formula, sorry, these coordinates having or creating a certain square. So, what is the basic logic behind this kind of questions? Suppose I give you two, sorry, four points with certain coordinates and you have to show that this is a perfect rectangle then what you exactly have to prove if you prove that pr is equal to qs and pq is equal to rs that is for the rectangle then we can easily show that it is creating or these four coordinates are creating one such rectangle right similarly to the square for a square if you prove that for each of these distance are equal to each other, then you will also see that it is nothing but the square, because both when all the sides are equal. So for this, you need the distance formula, and you have to find the distance of each, that is PQ, then PS, then RS, and QR. And after finding all those distance, if you show that that all the distance are equal, so it's a square. If two of these distance are equal, then it's a, a rectangle. And for and for equilateral triangle, you have to show each of these. Sides are equal. Suppose, the, and for that, only three coordinates will be given to you, and you have to find the distance from each. And all the distance must be equal for this kind of equilateral coordinates. Sorry, equilateral triangles. So that's it. And you have to perform all these sums like that very easy. You don't need to worry. Just practice it very well. If you have any doubt, anytime you can ask me in the comment section. I will surely reply you and help you also.